a very important meeting. Sleepy meeting. God damn it. I knew the moment you said yo, Brian, I thought, that motherfucker's got a camera, and it's time for another important meeting. And to be honest, like, uh, this is the perfect time to do it because, um, here, let me, I'm just gonna close all of these. I can't tell which one is. Oh, there it is. Dude, can we just talk about DiamondPlug.tv real quick? Sure. Um, it's happening. It's happening. Like, uh, all the best parts of uh, the Diamond Club experience, the participatory menu. Like, in the beginning, there's BB Live Show. And BB Live Show, you know, put out to the universe, let's all participate. Don't just watch the show, but, you know, make jokes. Let's make fake photoshops and whatever, and all the best jokes from the chat room will show up in the feed. And there was something participatory from the very beginning. And... Five years later, wow. six years later, uh, we're at this place where, you know, everyone who was there at the beginning and people who weren't. We just take that. It was my phone. Oh, okay. Um, it's like, I don't know, they're all, they, they all have the equipment, they all have the skills, they all have uh, what it takes to start doing video content. And it's like, I absolutely adore it. So right now, let me just open up, uh, close this stuff. Diamond Club. Dot TV. There's, uh, there's recents, which is of course, you know, me and Justin related stuff. But then also, you know, we got uh, Brian Curley over at Drunk Kids Gaming. We got Kuhan playing whatever the hell he's doing right now. He's doing a movie draft thing. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh. You know what? I hear rumors we're going to go right into drafting, and I am going to then go back and record the whole thing again. So, Sounds like it's going smooth as usual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we just lost uh, Ashley and... Uh, In April. Uh, yeah. Back in last... Uh, but at any rate, man, like, I'm really blown away. It's like, uh, 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 I don't know, in so many ways, me and Justin and Owen and Brett, in the beginning, were just dancing on the top of a mountain, and uh, then we looked down and we're like, oh, fuck, an avalanche is happening, and that's pretty wonderful. Like, that's maybe one of the most precious things in my life, mm. is that we're able to make that happen. Uh, but... Yeah. More importantly, this is not a thing related to a thing. Some of you may think that all of this has to do with something that I'm not allowed to talk about. <clears throat> I wouldn't know about that. It's drugs. Brian's a drug dealer. <laughs> you heard it here first. All He's those like hot drugs. Doing business. And I am in the business of drugs. Oh. My business. Just tell me that looked good. That's all yeah. I want to know. Yeah. It looks like drug money. Do you know how many times, <laughs> do you know how many briefcases you have to get and open and how many bills you have to arrange in such a way to make it look as drug dealerish as possible? No, how many? Five. At least a few. I mean, right? like, yeah, five. This is my dad's briefcase, huh. uh, which I never knew. Uh, I asked my dad, I was like, hey, can I borrow your briefcase for this uh, random television project that I'm doing that I'm definitely not violating your contract to talk to you about right now? Uh, and, uh, and dad was like, uh, yeah, man. <laughs> or he was like, my oil trash case? And I was like, huh? He's like, yeah, man, all the oil trash had those. I was like, what's oil trash? He's like, well, all of us, everybody in the oil biz, we're, we're just oil trash. And I had never heard my dad talk about his job in a self-deprecating way. And so I shared with him, like, well, I guess it makes sense because I'm carny trash. But meanwhile, like, seriously. So this is 
astonishingly deep. And in order to make it look this deep, by the way, this is only $3,000. <laughs> I mean, I say only in air quotes. $3,000 is a lot of money. Which, by the way, if you ever want to feel rich, take whatever your balance is in your account and just ask them to <laughs> give it to you in ones. And just hold it for just a little bit. And then when your friend asks for something, be like, here's your fucking money. Oh. Here's your fucking money. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? I feel assaulted. <laughs> there you go. Brant, you did good editing. You did very good editing. That's for you. Yeah, a little bit extra for you. Uh, the rest is, these are my bed sheets. And, uh, and I needed to, uh, needed to kind of boost everything up because $3,000 didn't fit. Hold on, real quick, let me just. This is too good to pass up. Mm. <clears throat> this is how I usually sit down. I mean, you gotta admit, it's a pretty great photo. Yeah, that looks about right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, meanwhile, in order to make everything look uh, look good, uh, I, I I put my old bed sheets in here, but but it still wasn't enough, and so I put in out of everything, I put in a copy of Martin Gardner's Encyclopedia of Impromptu Magic, uh, which when I first started scam school. I wrote Teller. I was like, hey, you know, my current plan is to just put all my best material forward. How long can this last? And uh, his semi-flippant response was, I don't know, Martin Gardner's Encyclopedia of Impromptu Magic is pretty thick. And, uh, <laughs> and sure enough, he's right. Hmm. So it's like uh, basically a lot of real... Uh, Martin Gardner is one of the greatest, greatest collectors. He wrote all the magic tricks. Uh, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> and uh, and he put them all in his book, and I got to meet him. And now I'm going to reach over here. Just hand me all this money. You get yeah. one. So this is the trick. This is the kind of stuff you don't think of. Like, how can we make this look like a lot of money, um, but also make it look like it was just kind of thrown in there willy-nilly? But meanwhile, everything's all perfectly done. The part I'm looking forward to is when I go to the airport. Uh... Because, I mean, you don't, you don't check this in your luggage, right? Right. Well, I... I mean, I don't you, know. Yeah, you're, you're like, I don't, <laughs> asshole boss. <laughs> I don't know how they do it out here in Austin, but... Yeah. Um, so, I guess I'll carry this on? I don't know. Maybe I'll check this and... What you had to do is you had to tape it under your shirt. <laughs> and walk like the Michelin man? Yeah, you gotta have a, a dollar suit. There you go. Looks good, right? Yeah. It's like a, it's like a, a intentional bedhead. Intentional bedhead? Yeah. Like, you gotta look messy, like you don't sure. care. Sure, But it can't be too crazy. Yeah, well, that's a good point, because then I'm sure it won't. Yeah. Yeah. Magic. Is this your dollar? This was not the dollar I wanted to have come out. Take this with these other dollars. Not that there's anything special. Brian Brushwood, exposed. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, boss. I'm just a guy. But how could this have been done? But how could it? The magician <laughs> appears to allow any dollar to be taken. And yet, it shows up in a condom. But how could this have been done? Got a lot to answer for, Nate Stanforth. Oh, there we go. Hold on. Yes. It's fine. Mm. We're all fine here. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. So what do you want to see most in the... Uh, in the next three months. Three months. Well, it's April now, so that's uh, three months. 
Okay. Um, it's through what, like July? Yeah. Uh, I want to see me move. Where do you, where do you want to move? Uh, anywhere else. Anywhere north of San Marcos. Okay, right on. Um, yeah, can I confess something? I was a little surprised that you moved to San Marcos. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's, you seemed into it, so I was like... It's yeah, dirt was, cheap. Well, there's that. Uh, yeah. That's a good point. Because it was like 600 bucks a month, and that includes utilities, that includes internet... Do, do you want a place by yourself, or do you want a roommate? I would prefer a place by myself. I've had plenty of roommates over the past two years. Yeah, but what if you knew the roommate? Like, like, what if it was a... What if you and Roberto Villegas and Bryce, for example... I mean, just, let's say no one right. uh Let's say the three of you guys put in for, like, a, you know, 1,500 square feet apartment where each of you had your own room and own bathroom. Mm-hmm. In or out? I would give it thought. But, but over that, you would take a 600 square feet place to yourself? Yes. Okay. Right. And especially if I could live in a place nearby all of those people. Yeah. So that way it would be easy enough to hang out, but, but I wouldn't be forced to. Place, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, would you do an efficiency? What's an efficiency? An efficient, well, a one bedroom apartment is usually like um, a shared, uh, we'll say, kitchenette and semi living room, and then there's a room and a bathroom. Okay. But an efficiency is just the kitchenette and living room and a bathroom. Hmm. So, so you would, would it be like. Like when you open the door, you would see your bed. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you just have that space as like a convertible room where it's like sometimes sometimes I sleep here, but sometimes I just have have my entertainment center in here. Uh, yeah. Or or in the way I experienced it, like there's a just a, a chair there and then I'm like, Well, where do you sleep at night? He's like, Well I fold back this chair and then that's where I sleep at night. Uh it those would, are cheap. It would depend on the the space and location. I would, I would look at it. It would honestly, it would mostly depend on what kind of internet I could get there. Dude, you and me both. Everybody, like, like nobody seems to get that. I'm, I'm like, you don't understand. And I've been this way. I've been this way for twenty years. For twenty years, I moved up north because I heard Roadrunner uh, uh, was going to be available up north. That's what we bought a house because I heard it was likely to be one of the first places you could get uh, cable internet. Hmm. And uh, uh, you're talking to somebody who, um, I mean, first of all, I'm, I'm an a guy gigafimer now, but, uh, but before that I moved to Wells Branch for that. Um, the, uh, before that, I, I bought ISDN just because it was the lowest latency way to play video games at the time. Uh, and before that, I, I bought the satellite internet because even though it was asynchronous and the light was terrible, uh, it was the only way to get a megabit down. It was, hmm. yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, um, and plus, like, the past two years, I've, like, uh, my apartment complex, like, my, my space is, like, it, I have a decent amount of space, um, and, like, I always have, a, like, shared living room slash kitchen space with my other roommates, um, but I never, I've never used it, so yeah. basically I have all of my office stuff and all of my bedroom stuff all in my bedroom, and I just live out of that. So, so when's your lease up? Uh, July 31st. So have you started looking yet? Yes. What, what's your budget? How much do you want to spend? Um, right now, I would like a place that's 900 2000 per month, um, but I might be able to stretch to 1200 a month. I don't know. It depends. Have you, have you, have you looked at... Uh, where, where are you looking right now? Literally everywhere in Austin. No, no, no. Ben, been doing like what website? Uh, I don't remember. Really? You don't use Zillow? No. What? You don't what? use Zillow? No, what's that? And Zillow is the jam. It tells you what everything's worth according to Zillow. Uh, let's do this. So we'll go listing type. Uh, not for sale. For rent. We'll do for for rent. Uh, you will say 500 to 
1500 uh, zero beds home type we'll say apartments condos and co-ops okay townhomes I would I'm just gonna leave all that stuff sure sure uh, dude dude see all these purple dots mm -hmm. these are your homes <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see here we go Thousand a month for a studio, one bath, five hundred square feet, one bedroom, six hundred square feet. That's eleven hundred. Uh, yeah, dude. Here's eight units, one bedrooms for amounts. Look at this. This sign says now leasing. You can live there. Hmm. Well, so it's settled then. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, they got studios for eight fifty five. Uh, dude, you got options. Do you want to live more north or south? I haven't really decided yet. How close to downtown? Not, not close enough to not not close you, to downtown. You don't want to pay a premium. No. That, right? Because um, I want to avoid downtown. Yeah. Okay. Well then. I mean, I'm looking now south and west because that'll be close to me, but I don't know that that's what you want. Yeah, I mean, the the advantage is, is pretty much anywhere between my apartment and Bryce's apartment is going to get me closer to you and Roberto and Bryce and ev everybody. Yeah. Uh, and also, it'll get me closer to Dallas, which will make trips up there oh, easier. Right. Well, you should look at the north side of town. Um, uh, I really dug living on the north side of town. What it is. Um, here's a 700 square feet, one bedroom, one bath for a thousand. Dude, you got a ton of options. Here's another one bedroom for a thousand. Yeah, I've got, I've got a couple places that I was gonna look at, um, but I'll I'll cross reference those with this stuff. Yeah, dude. Uh, Zillow is amazing. What have you been using? I don't know, just like... Find me an apartment, Google. Rent.com. Rent.com? Something like that. Mm. Rent.com. No, not that one. Well, I mean, I, I kind of looked at that one, but didn't really use it. There's, there's another one, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Mm. 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 It's all Zilla. <laughs> Come on, bro. Uh... So, uh, what else? Ask me. Go. Now's a good time. All right. Well, I've been meaning to have a frank discussion with you about your title formatting. For right. Scam School? Largely for Scam School, yes. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about SEO, all right, because I feel like that's a, a big problem, but that's something I can live with because I've divorced myself from scam school to a certain degree um what i am very curious about is your capitalization scheme because some sometimes you follow the ap style guide of uh all words that are four letters or longer or longer yeah capitalized but yeah. sometimes Sometimes you lowercase four letter words as well. And sometimes you sometimes it's just all caps. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh first of all And I, I just I do the easiest one, which is just capitalize every word. Although sometimes that looks bad if you have like a, a series of small words. <sighs> Scam school has slowly become a parody of its most outrageous components, right? Um, scam School exists as a feedback loop of like, uh, like you go back to the oldest episodes of Scam School and you get like, this week on Scam School, we're going to learn how to make a card appear. And then it's like, uh, and then, you know, flash forward to three years before, and you're like, this week on Scam School, we're going to learn how to make a card appear. And then, uh, you know, 
eventually you get to modern day and it's like I have a giant beard and my hair is just unkempt and I'm like this week on Scam School we make a card I fear I'm looking forward to that version <laughs> so um, uh, and, and I think the titling has kind of fallen in that thing it's like there's there's a thing that we do that seems to work and it just sort of has amplified itself after to, over time. And I wish I could say that there was any kind of rhyme or reason to it, except there's like, you know, you do it and you're like, that looks right, you know? <laughs> it's and, like, that's the right word to shout out of those five words. And to be clear, I've also seen you write out some titles as if they were a sentence with no punctuation, so like the first word is capitalized and the rest is under or not capitalized, yeah, <laughs> which well, is baffling. Uh, well, well, I mean, what you're assuming is that the show is consistent. That, that <laughs> you, you, you're assuming that there is a formula that is applied over time, but instead, um, you know, the show is very much a reflection of uh, of of. of my evolution over time, you know, which is like, I've changed my mind about a lot of things. And then when I change my mind, I start doing them differently. And sometimes that means that uh, the entire aspects of the show and the way the show is presented and the way the show is, you know, developed changes. You know, and, and part of it also is that uh, a lot of stuff, um, I, I, especially, I mean, I assume your points are all about just the last two years because we've only probably done it for yeah two years sure one year one we haven't even done it for two years yeah I mean we've 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 done production for a year and three months year and four months right let me just take a moment right uh, yeah that's how recent all of that is and so it's like. So, like, any criticisms you have about, like, well, this went off half-cocked, I'm like, yes, you know why? <laughs> because that went off half-cocked, and we definitely just sort of... <laughs> That's a true fact. <laughs> we just definitely grabbed on and hoped we would figure it out, and, uh, yeah. Man, I was I was so pumped for that, uh, the title of this week's remix, the, uh, the lock, or I guess it wasn't a remix, it was the, uh, the actual episode, the lock-picking episode, um... So I, I sent you a text about this, and I wanted to call it lock picking all in caps, and then part two, oh. lock picks again, because that that's like the most direct stab at the dumb like naming conventions. Because we've had this is our third lock picking episode, right. and the second lock picking episode was lock picking part one. Well, okay, now keep in mind the reason was oh, dude, you want some inside sauce? Sure. Uh, we shot two episodes with uh, with. It was a friend of Josh Viegas, the, the locksmith guy. He was awesome. Uh, we shot the first one, which was the bump key, and then the second mm -hmm. one was going to be about actually picking because we actually showed me I was able to pick it, and I used a pick gun, and eventually we showed how to drill out a lock and get it to open. Hmm. That footage might have just gotten lost. I don't know what happened or where, but I sort of got a phone call where they're like, uh, yeah, so one, oh, you know what it was? Is not all of the footage, uh, one of the three tapes, and by the way, judge not lest you be judged. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I made up from, from my deleting all of our footage once before. <laughs> um, what? Most, no, I'm still astounded that we have not gotten any comments about that. Oh, where, about, about where, one? yeah, like those three or four episodes, those are just two camera shoots. Do you want to call? Do you want to call them out? You want to set up the challenge? Sure. Set up the challenge. Tell tell yeah. everyone what they're supposed to find. Yeah. So, sometime in our past year and four months, there was a night where we shot a run of episodes, and then uh, this was before we had our rigorous. Um, memory card organization techniques. <laughs> and, and by the way, it is no legit, no lie. Like fucking, it says on the thing, it's like adhere to the format before <laughs> you deposit. Yeah. So we we have things in place now, but back then we did not. And it was the first time we had ever uh, 
hit all of our memory cards or something to that, like a large portion of our memory cards. And so, like, at some point, I just had to go grab a new memory card, and it happened to be one that Zach shot three episodes on, and then all that footage got deleted. It, it, it was the wide shot, right? It was not the wide shot. It was all of the close-up okay. shots, I See, think. This is, okay, for, for, okay, so you can understand that in the case of the uh, lockpicking thing, it was the wide shot that was yeah, gone. Yeah, that would be pretty hard to they, do anything with. And they just looked at they're like, there's no way I can't. Yeah. You know, we, we can't figure out how to do it. So Although, were, there was that one episode with Curly where our wide shot did go missing. Okay. Well, by the way, what happened that time? Uh, that time, I had used a card that wasn't the 64 gig. Cause I th- oh, I th- it ran out. Yeah. That's what it was. Okay. But the important thing is that we learned. From these mistakes. Sure. <laughs> and we're all great now. <laughs> but yeah, I I so love the idea of just out of nowhere being a lock picking part two that was secretly the third part of like all uh, all these clashing ideas hey, come together. Can I ask you, like like is there um because you uh, you started watching Scam School at what age? Uh when it first came out. So like 15, 16? What year was that? It, it was 2008. 2008, I was 16. Yeah, yeah. that sounds about right. Right on. Uh, and so you have had the whole experience. Like, you had the whole, like, oh, this is a fringe thing, and then you saw it hopefully get, you know, a little more popular. And then uh, uh, I guess we met, what, three, four years ago? Mm, three years ago? Yes. Yeah. It was 2011 that we met. So, uh, I guess three and a half years ago. And, uh, but even then, it was like, I, uh, I, there's a weird journey where you start off just totally digging something and then you become a part of a thing. And once you become a part of it, you see it differently. And hopefully, if everything goes well, you still love it, but you love it in a different way as you become part of it. Uh, I know that's definitely been the case, um, you know, with my uh, correspondence with Teller, you know, Penn and Teller, and Mm -hmm. it's certainly been the case for, you know, Revision 3 and YouTube and, uh, um, you know, CJ and uh, all of these relationships I've had. But I would love to hear from your perspective what it was like, you know, to go through that change. Uh, Yeah, I mean, so, like, Scam School, it was weird because... I first started watching Scam School because it was getting plugged at the tail end of some Dignations, I believe. Wow. Um, and I was like, "All right, sure, I'll. I guess I'll watch that." And then it was it was this cool thing. It was probably it probably ended up being like Human Jack Lantern, or maybe it was maybe it was the Human Chimney, maybe because that was a pretty early one. Yeah. Um, both of those were pretty early. They yeah, like but it was it was just some kind of uh, the, something like dead symbol. Yeah, and there was something like, oh wow, that's a cool thing that I just didn't know existed, um, and so that kind of hooked me in. And then I kind of, you know, early on, I sort of figured, I, I sort of. And um. that's why you always leave a note. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Waffleopagus just said, so were you talking up the new Diamond Club TV in general, or were you saying we were doing something now? Because we're all waiting in chat for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so good. They just got pranked by a master yeah. chat pranker. But yeah, no, so I... I you know, I, I kind of just k- held on to it because I was like, oh, this is, there's there's an element of entertainment in this. Um, and then, like, I really, I remember very specifically remembering, like, when you guys got the glide cam. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. Oh, uh, yeah, so, so you you sort of, um, not that we ever showed it off, but, but, like, you noticed the production elements and started mm-hmm. to appreciate it for what we were doing in production. Yeah, and then... Um, cause later, like Raphael, one of our, uh, one of our shooters had a full on chest rig, mm. you know, with, with all that stuff balanced and that was amazing. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there was there was an element of that, and then you know by that time I had already gotten into BB Live Show and NSFW Show and whatever was out around yeah, those well, times. Well, 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 walk me through the descent. First, it's like ah, this thing's a kind of a thing, and I guess at some point you followed on Twitter or whatever. And yeah. And you heard about, like, oh, I'm doing live streaming. Or N- knowing how I end up falling onto these things, it was probably my dad who followed you first. Because um, yeah. he always introduced me to stuff. Like, he introduced me to Dignation. He introduced me to Totally Rad Show. Um, he probably introduced me to you at some point. Um, and then through Twitter, I found BB Live Show around, like, episode eight or so. Wow. wow. So pretty early on. And then, so weird because to me all of that was just like uh, doing push-ups. It was all just practice. It was all just getting ready to, you know, soon somebody who matters will pay attention to this. Right. And it's like it turns out like the people who mattered the most were already watching. That's mm-hmm. amazing to me. Yeah, and so I stuck around through that, and then, yeah, and then I just watched everything else as it came out. Um, and then, uh, uh, okay, so uh, and then. Although I did have a falling out with Scam School. Like, I just stopped watching. Oh, yeah. You're uh. like, fuck you, that's too far. Don't show me that. <laughs> but I you know, well, a lot of people would, you know, because they're kind of like potato chips, they would save them, you know, and that's mm-hmm. that's kind of how I was with the Onion video. It's like I would, you know, you know, they're only three, five minutes each, so I would just save up till I had a bunch of them and then I'd dive in. Hmm. Um, so you dropped off of Scam school, and then what? Uh, and then I started working on scam school. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, well, I guess I better start watching some of these. Well, well because I remember, like, well, but, but, but even as you stopped watching scam school, you were watching NSFW. Sure, yeah. And yeah. Weird things and stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I put out, I remember putting out for that round, I was like, I need someone to go on the road with me. Oh, shoot, I guess John had announced he was going to leave. The first time? The first time. <laughs> he's he's announced what, twice so far? Yep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the first time John announced he was going to leave, I was like, hey, I need somebody to come out of the room with you. And, and like usual, there was a big rush of names that came in. But then uh, I remember the moment I saw yours in there, like it was just like this gestalt flash of like the 30 to 50 times I've seen you, you know, provide the best zinger in chat you know, provide a link to, to stuff that, uh, that I did. In fact, I was wearing your shirt earlier today, the, uh, the, the, the Max Trollbot. Max Trollbot. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's like, um, all of a sudden it was just like, like, I don't know who he is, or I guess I, we had met by then, hadn't we? Yeah. We had met, but I only vaguely remember, but it was like, I don't even know if he can lift 50 pounds. I don't know the text. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, all I know is that he's got a reputation in my mind for always having the best ideas and for being right on top. Mm. So it's like you leapt to the front of the line at that moment. Uh, but but here's the funny part is I did not realize that the job you were volunteering for was something so far out of your comfort zone at the time. Like, mm-hmm. like I did not find that out until, I mean, I guess really like, you know, four or five months ago. Yeah, well, also when I signed up for it, I expected Scam School to be a bigger part of the job earlier than it happened. Aha. Uh-huh. So you're yeah. like, oh, I got you. So uh, I felt like, well, obviously. Obviously. Obviously, <laughs> I'll be editing Scam School. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, congratulations. Anyway, sure. revision does all that shit. You're going to schlep my crap for this next gig at the college. Basically. Um, but yeah, I, I also knew that the touring was definitely going to play a, a role in the job. Um, and just like being a person that's had to deal with really not liking people and having to be around people or talking to people or messing with people at all. Uh, I knew that that would force me into a position of self growth. Do, do you feel like you actually got anything out of it or do you feel like you were supposed to, but you can't really point to anything that really happened? Now? Yeah, no, I feel like, um, both, both years have have I've gained a lot out of. Um, Scam schools helped me grow a lot with just being able to produce stuff, being able to produce stuff on a schedule, um, just fine tuning my craft to a certain element. 
um, getting comfortable. Like, well, scam school also has that element of dealing with people. Cause if I'm having to direct somebody into a shot, like I don't like telling people what to do. Um, and I, it definitely has an element of that, but the touring also definitely, it at the very least helped me understand, like better understand what makes me uncomfortable and how to deal with it. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like, and obviously I'm not you, but if I were to guess... Are you sure, Brian? Touring, <laughs> after all, have you ever seen us both at the same time on this current video? No. <laughs> See? Uh, what? Oh, oh wait, maybe not. Um, if I was going to guess, I would guess that there's something about the white-hot electricity of a live event that is super terrifying, uh, but yep. also removes any opportunity to say no to things. Like, like sure. once you're there, it's like, motherfucker, this ladder has to come on stage and nobody else is going to do it, so I guess mm -hmm. I'll pull this ladder out on stage. Um, but on the flip side, uh, the uh, because a scam school shoot is so intimate, it sort of um, it changes the rules where it's almost more difficult because it's like, during a show, you could say, you, over there, right now, I need it. And everyone's there, and it's like, oh shit, I guess I'll do it. Whereas, at a scam school shoot, you know, we are, on a stage show, we are welcome guests. And as welcome guests, we have a certain amount of authority to ask other people to bring us things that we need for the show. Mm -hmm. When we're at a random bar on a Wednesday or Thursday night, it's a little harder to insist people do X, Y, or Z for us. There's a little more of that seduction, which I personally find a little more difficult, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's a strangeness to the live shows where the more people there are, the easier it is to, you know, to get the reaction that you expect. Hmm. Sure. And at the end of the day, it's, it's really funny because, like, the whole reason that Ivan really even considered like applying for the job was just like right time kind of thing because i i got my associate of arts in 2012 this summer and then at that point i had already kind of decided i wasn't going to do any more schooling um so by the time the the touring job came up it was like four months of my dad going hey so like Gonna so get a like, job? Uh, you just gonna live here on my couch <laughs> or what, kid? I, I told him to give me, like, my last summer off, and then that had just barely expired around the time that you needed somebody. And that was also, I was also trying to get in with the film right crew because they had just moved over. By the way, can I say for the record, like, mm -hmm. I have derived so much pleasure. Of rubbing it in right <laughs> that, 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 I'm like, could have had bro. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> He's making genius for scam school. <laughs> um, but like, uh, do you think your dad is is? I mean, I don't know. Relationships with dad are always quirky or whatever. But like, do, do you think he's he's pleased with? I, I have to imagine that uh, that he watches everything you do, everything you put your hands on, and mm -hmm. uh, quietly, you know, tries to understatedly, you know, offer his support. But, I mean, has he said anything about uh, what he thinks of your career path and how it's going? Sure. I mean, he watches a ton of stuff. He was telling me just uh, yesterday that he uh, sat down to watch the uh, movie draft episode, and he thought that was really funny. Um, he watches a lot of, like, the cinematography. He watches all the ads and stuff. Um, but yeah, his his only concern that I've heard so far is just he is understandably concerned that I overwork myself and I don't get paid enough for how hard I work myself. Uh, that is a fact. Your dad, <laughs> is, your dad is completely accurate. He also, in that same breath, could say, the sun be hot and uh, the moon be cold. Sure. Uh, I mean, those are those are things. And we we've talked about this. It's like, uh, I mean, you so over deliver in every aspect of the job, and you know, my my goal is to just grow this pie. I mean, you and uh, Bryce and John 
uh, have made possible a transition uh, that I never expected. You know, I went from a single, a one to two man operation that was constantly running just to keep the lights on. And it's like, instead, the more, it seems like the more I trust other people who are better than me at things, the better off we are. And it's like, if, if the next, you know, five years go like the last two years, then, you know, hopefully you guys will be making grown up money any second. Like, that's all I want to do is yeah. build this enough so that you guys uh, can get what you deserve. Mm. Uh, so I thought of. Wait, did you just zoom in on the money? Is that what just happened? Yeah, well, I framed over here so that way it would be in frame as you were talking. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> God damn it. This is magic money. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. God damn it. About to get some magic money did, in my did you wallet. Show what it looks like, like, uh, you know, like, fucking drug dust. Uh, yeah. I told him you were a drug dealer while you were gone. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, I thought of a, a great podcast idea the other day. Yeah. Um, and so it's going to be, I still need John's approval. It's going to be Bryce, John, and myself. Right on. And it's going to be like a once monthly audio podcast thing. And we could talk about stuff like, I'd be really interested to hear how Bryce's approach to edits differ from my approach to edits. And like, which by the way, I already got a little taste of that because Bryce, <laughs> because Bryce edited the, uh, the, the watch video. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite moments was, was us noticing that the inhaling, the, uh, the, <laughs> the flame suck, the flame suck, uh, <laughs> wasn't in there. And, uh, and Bryce was like, I'm sorry, Brian, you just looked too awful. <laughs> And then I turned to Brad, and Brad goes, "If I edited it, it would be nothing but <laughs> right. it's the whole ad." <laughs> it's, it's amazing because you guys really do have totally different philosophies, and it works out really well. You know, there's a balance. Yeah, uh, and also it would be nice to hear like what John does for a living because I don't I don't see much insight into that all the time. So oh, dude, it's totally different now. I mean, like John used to do so many tedious things. I, you know what? I would love it if you came by and just sort of got, like, like, like today was a big day where we spent like 30 minutes going back and forth about how to set up the, um, the pitch for the, what we're calling the Ferguson Bills. Uh, that's part of the reason you saw, see all these. Uh, if you go to the bank and you get uh, brand new $1 bills, uh, they'll be uh, sequential, which means for every one do- 100 brick you get, you can find uh, uh, 10 of them that the last two digits will add up to the same number. For example, like, uh, you know, 1 and 8, uh, 2 and 7, 3 and 6, 4 and 5, 5 and 4, so on, so on, so on. Um, and so uh, this week's upcoming scam school deals with that. And so, rather than send everybody to the bank, we want to uh, make them available on the site. And so it's like, well, how do you present that? Do you present it as like, these are super rare and we're awesome for having them? Or do you lay out honestly like, hey man, you totally could get these for free, but it will legitimately take you three to four hours to assemble everything. So why don't you just give us 10 bucks and we'll do it for you. Um, And then, you know, so it's like, first there's like, how do we want to position it? And then we start fussing over, uh, in fact, first thing tomorrow, uh, we're going to send out an email to the you know, fans of the site, and we're going to talk about, um, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, usually what happens is John does an initial draft, and then I go through and just, you know, change everything to make it sound like it's what I would write, mm-hmm. and, then, uh, and then I'd kick it back to him, and he would point out like an obvious inconsistency or something. Uh, but I would love that. I, th- I think we totally should get together. and uh, Because, like, our job is for about five to six hours a day. I sit here, he sits there, and we just sort of cake ideas back and forth over, um, you know, what's a good idea, what's a bad idea. And it very much is a Lennon McCartney kind of, uh, you know... Uh, you know, I've got this wild-eyed big vision and he'll remind me of what X, Y, or Z costs and then we'll come to a, you know, something that seems to be working, man. The scamstuff.com really seems to be resonating. I'm really proud of that. Yeah. It's doing all right. So far, so good, eh? Yeah. 
but yeah, when you see John, tell him about that podcast idea. I I uh, I I put it in our Slack chat, but. Uh, Which, by the way, how did I never get invited to this? Slack you yet? did. You just it got lost in your infinity oh, email. It, it, it email me again. And then and then we brought it up, and you're like, "Oh, great! I need another thing to keep up with." <laughs> okay. Well, now for the record, I'm saying like, invite me so I can have sure, it so I can know what's going on. Yeah, but I put it in there, and J- John John will get notified like when you specifically call out his name and stuff. But like for general chat, he he pops in every once in a while, so he might not have even seen it yet. Yeah. Um, but I, I really like Slack. Dude, I love the idea. Uh, in fact, actually, before John even worked for me, uh, I just did some tech stuff. There was a few details from 2011 I had to clear up. So mm-hmm. I went through my calendar in 2011. And like six months or a, month, uh, a couple months before I hired John, there's this little thing that says, be on John's podcast. And I was like, I had a podcast? And I was like, oh, that's right. It was about movies. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, we'll have to find that. <laughs> Awesome. Classic. Uh, all right, boss. Uh, so it's definitely past midnight. All right. Uh, this was a very important meeting. Yeah, quick update. We've got, um, we got, so Brian's doing drug dealer money stuff. Uh, that'll be great whenever, yeah. whenever Brian's done. I don't know what it is, but I'm saying if you ever see a TV show that's on prime time that was shot in Las Vegas. In theory, allegedly. And Brian slaps it around a little bit. Yeah. Really? WD-40. I'm just saying, yo. What's up? And also, soon we'll be uh, making some secret content that hopefully should be out in like a month or two Dude, or whatever. Way, you, uh, are you getting the updates on that? Mm, nope. Alright, let me loop you in on that. Alright. We'll tell all interested parties. But, uh, stuff's happening. As it does. Yep. And always making scam schools. Always m- making whatevers. Yep. By the way, it's my dad. It's my dad's briefcase. I'm going to put my dad's briefcase on a very important oh, wow. stage on a TV show. Ooh. There's his initials. Alan Burt Brushwood. Get right up on that. This is my biological dad, and I hope my fake bastard dad appreciates it. Boiled. Boiled. What?